it, it is so important that Christians who claim to be followers of Christ mm -hmm. right. really, really understand the radical, uh, redemptive work of our Lord and Savior. We, we must fully grasp that, that our salvation is never a result of our performance or of our morality. In fact, if we ought to be truthful with ourselves, <laughs> it is our performance. It is our morality that required a Savior in the first place. That's right. Yeah. Every one of us who claim to have a relationship with Jesus, we have that relationship because we have come to understand that Jesus the Christ yes. is the yes. supreme sacrifice yes. offered on an altar uh -huh. at a place called Calvary uh -huh. so that you and I uh -huh. could experience reconciliation and restoration. Yes. So the sin of our Christian faith is grounded in our understanding of him offering himself. Amen. And, and, and the condition of the, of the human family and why God would have to make such a sacrifice for people who initially claim that they love him. Mm -hmm. And so we must understand then our being saved is more than just showing up. Amen. In church. Our, our being saved is more than participating within uh, these four walls. Our being saved ought to grow out of an understanding that we were once lost. And God, out of his infinite and insatiable love, made a conscious decision to embody himself in the weakness of the human experience, deposit himself in time so that one day you and I could see eternity. You never need to become so arrogant in your religiosity. You never need to think that somehow you have arrived Amen. because you uh, no longer participate in dysfunctional, deviant behavior. Amen. You got to always remember that the reason you exist is because God purposely made a decision to keep you and to keep me yes. when we weren't worth being kissed. Yes. 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 He reached down and pulled us out yes. of brokenness and misery, pulled us out of our frustration, dusted us off yes. by giving us grace yes. and mercy. Yes. And so and so so we we today we don't sit here. Uh, as people who are arrogant, thinking that, that we have arrived. We, we, we sit here as people who are going somewhere. And watch this. Going somewhere that we really didn't want to go. But God, out of his compassion, reached out and found us. And so when I think about his goodness and all that he's done for us, For me right now. I don't think about houses and cars. I don't think about promotion. And I don't think about mega churches. My mind goes back to that old rugged cross. And the fact that I serve a God that loved me so much to tolerate me until I figured out that I was the one that needed him. joy of being a Christian. The joy is I know who I am. And I'm 
coming to know who he is. And so, and so my ever changing understanding of God forces me to live in a place of incredible Amen. humility. Yes. I don't understand how yes. folks walk around think they better than somebody else. Yes. 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 You, you, you know you understand God's love. Yes. Watch this. I continue. Uh, God's love is, is pulling me, mm -hmm. connecting me. Uh -huh. But all the while, my flesh yeah. is disconnecting me. Yeah. And so in a strange way, the tension between me and God is forcing God to come after me. Yeah. And the strength of God's love is pulling me even while I'm struggling. Yeah. And that's why when you see folk crying, sometimes it ain't got nothing to do with what's going wrong. It's a recognition that God loves me. Even when I didn't deserve his love. Somebody knows the day that if it had not been. For the Lord has been your God. Oh, that and so, so we must, we must, we must understand that the Christian faith is more than just engaging in ecclesiastical entertainment. It's more than just singing your song. It's more than just getting your shout on it, getting your dance on. It's living with the recognition and the revelation of Jesus the Christ and the fact that God has uniquely exposed himself to us. And allow us to come to know him. Even though we constantly choose to disconnect from him by engaging in willful disobedience. Doing things that we know are not the will of God. You remember when Adam and Eve made a conscious decision that they would disobey yes. one commandment, yes. one direction, yes. just one instruction. Yes. God didn't give Adam and Eve a whole lot of compass. Yes. In fact, he told them, uh, just like T.I. said, you can have what you want. whatever you want. <laughs> hmm? Just don't touch that doggone tree. And you have whatever you want. Just don't touch that one tree. I don't think the big deal was about the tree. You know, I, I, this is my poor systematic theology, forgive me, but I, I think the reason he told them not to touch the one tree is because he wanted them to maintain a sense yes. of accountability. Yes. Yes. To God. Amen. Listen, God gave them the authority to handle the whole God. Yes. Told Adam to name everything. Yes. And if you name it, you control it. Yes. That's a whole other circle right, right there. <laughs> if you name it, you control it. Right. So watch this. God wasn't tripping over who was going to run to God. Because he knew who made the God. God's issue was he just wanted to keep them accountable and submissive to his authority. So God says, I'll put one thing in your life that will make you accountable to me. You can't have Everything. You can't run. Everything. You can't do everything. But God says, just show me that you understand submission by leaving this one tree alone. 